When I get a camera to review or to try, I always use it as an excuse to shoot. For today's camera that I'm gonna try out on this vlog, I'm, uh, I've taken out the X70. In one of my last vlogs, I talked about how much I love wide angle and how I really like that focal range when I'm out with the family and also lighter gear like the X-T20 with a wide angle lens on it. So a lot of people suggested I try the X-70. Fuji Pro Services, they were really kind and sent me the X-70 to try it out. And so I thought I'd bring it out for today's little hike with the kids up in the canyon, a little goodbye to autumn. So up here we're gonna try this camera, both for vlogging, I'm actually vlogging with it right now, and to get some photos. It's what? Too creepy. It's creepy? No, look at that stone. I'm gonna let you have a turn, Dad. Dad, here. I'm gonna let you have a turn. Okay. I did take this out on a shoot last uh, last night. We did, we did a, a makeup product shoot from the company my wife does a lot of work for. So we had some models come out and I tried to bring out the X70 here and there just to get a few shots. Nothing amazing because we were sort of on the clock. So um, I definitely, we didn't want to focus on a review, a gear review at that point. But I did get some shots, I'll show you those. to that I have been shooting with the X70 for about a week but this is the first time I've taken it out like with the intent to vlog with it and see how it does as a vlogging device um, the, the initial thoughts I have as I'm taking it out on this little nature hike nature walk with my kids is that um, the image stabilization is a big thing for me it may not be for you but I don't have steady hands like at all so I really appreciate in body and maybe even electronic image stabilization and cameras, and that's something Fuji has just never had um, going for it. But uh, the flip-up screen is nice. Um, I don't really, I can't really tell how the autofocus does. Right now I'm on manual focus, which is my preferred method when I'm vlogging anyway, but earlier I was, uh, auto had the autofocus on. Um, so I'll probably dub over some voiceover at this point and tell you what I think of that, but Right now I'm not totally sure. It didn't seem, it seemed like it was hunting a little bit more than what I'd like. Uh, not as much separation with that 2.8 lens as I'd like also from a subject and a background. When out here everything kind of blends together. So it's nice when you've got a lens that can really blur out that background and isolate the subject. It's harder to get with this lens, you get some. But a combination of not being able to get close enough as well as not having a very low aperture for me puts this more in the point and shoot camp of camera and less in the prosumer camp. So that's a strike against it. Um, convenience is nice, there's a lot of other good things to say about it, but uh, those are the things that I find missing. Another thing about vlogging with this device that I don't love is that record button is flush with the top of the body, so there isn't a whole lot of tactile, like when I wanna hurry and get that record button, it's kinda hard to press, but in addition to that, it doesn't respond immediately. You have to hold it down for a bit and then it will kick in. The same thing when you turn it off, you have to hold it down. The combination of both makes it just too difficult, not enjoyable and a pain, especially if you're wanting to hurry to get that recording running, um, which you often do as a vlogger. Now you can switch that button, but uh, by default, it's not a wonderful experience. For 
this next little bit, I'm gonna switch it into autofocus again so you can see how the continuous autofocus does on the screen. Okay, we're at center focus, continuous autofocus at this point. See how, how much we get if there's some micro focusing or hunting. Um, so a couple other things I noticed when vlogging this, the other tactile experience I don't appreciate or I don't like is the dial on the front for continuous manual or, or single um, focus, the focus mode. It sort of sucks when you're trying to go quick. Um, I do appreciate that it updates while you're recording, mid-record, so if you find you're in, you know, if it's hunting too much and you want to switch to manual focus like I'm doing right now, that's good, but it's just, it's hard to do one-handed um, to get to the continuous. The, it, it want, it'll want to go all the way to one side or the other with the momentum of a flick. It's really hard to just keep it in the middle and that's, uh, so that's not a great experience. I also wish that the little tab on the side hung over more so that you could just, you could get it while you're kind of rubbing your thumb on the side and not, uh, man, it's just, it's awkward to use. So, you know, little things. It's the little things though, right? All right, who's ready for drinks? It's like we've got R2-D2. Let's see if it focuses on R2-D2. Who, who had R2-D2? Noah. Noah, okay. I'm testing the continuous focus while I'm divvying out their, their mid-hike drink. Okay, we've got Thor. No! Who hunted Thor? No, mine, mine. Of course the female wants Thor. And then we've got, we've got a hamster. Oh, we got a bunny. No. Oh, we have Bigfoot. No. Who is this? Okay, back on manual focus on my face again. My battery's almost gone, and that is another, of course, drawback of these cameras are, is the battery life. And Fuji only sent me one battery, so almost dead. So I'll probably conclude the video there uh, with some initial thoughts. Um, I'm just gonna take photographs until it dies, and I'll show you those now. Take a picture of it. It is day four, I think, of having the X70 on my person at all times. Um, been able to take more photos, been able to vlog a little bit more. But today is Halloween. In a few minutes, we're gonna go out trick or treating with the kids. So I'm gonna take this along to do some video and some photos. This will be the camera I used to document it. My big question is who is this camera for? I think it could go several ways, right? Vloggers might be interested in it because of the flip up screen, because of the, the really good video quality. Um, it seems like it could be a decent vlogging camera. Um, is it a street photographer's camera? So I've done a little bit of street photography with it. Is it uh, a camera for somebody traveling or like a dad? With kids or an owner of pets so I've been doing a little bit of pet photography a little bit of photography with my kids as we do things like the other day when we went for our walk in the canyon and now today when we're gonna go trick-or-treating um, that's my big question who is this for I'm not really sure I know the answer to that yet but I can say in regards to vlogging I probably would not use this as a vlogging device for two reasons one for some stabilization but two, for some better autofocus, the autofocus on here is clunky. It's just, that's the only word for it. Not only that, but um, when it focuses, you hear that sound. Um, here, I'll switch into, I'll switch into continuous autofocus so you can hear it. It's, uh, it's pretty loud. That means you'd want to use some external audio, but with a camera this size, you can't really mount an external audio. Gosh, that is 
yeah, switching back into manual now. You can't really mount an external audio thing on the top of this camera because uh, that's where you look at yourself. I don't know, the problem is where do you put the audio? If you do use it for logging, I would go manual focus, but the other problem is it's not super easy to manual focus this thing. The distance scale, especially if you're like me where you like to kind of point the camera down because it's more flattering, you don't look so chubby, um, you, you can't see the distance uh, thing because it's hidden by the top of the camera. And I don't like focus by wire, manual focus, which is what this is. You didn't get a walk tonight. Maybe you can get a walk tonight. Where the heck is this collar Our dog, Bibi, is dressed up as BB-8. Seemed the, the obvious choice. Say hi to the vlog, Danae. Hi. Here, let me help your... Thank you. Your Leia wig. wig. Thank you. I'm gonna tell everybody who you are. I think it's obvious. You think so? And I have my little sidekick. He should have been chewy. Chewy. Next, next year we'll make him chewy. Yeah. Tonight we're, is Halloween, and we're, I'm gonna take it with me to document the children's uh, adventures on the street. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna take the X70 along to see how it does as uh, a dad camera. I want to see how good this is as a dad camera. That's partly why I wanted to try it out. Is it a good vlogging camera or is it a good dad camera? Or well, who is this for? Is it a street photographer's camera? That's what we'll answer. I'll answer that another day because I, I still feel like I don't know it well enough. But uh, I'll take it along and I'll do some video and we'll do some photos and I'll show you what we get. Anything you want to say, Danae? I'm Princess obsessed Leia. with how little it is. It, it is. The camera. It's adorable. You would love this you camera. You can stick it in your purse. I was really hoping to finish this review before I got caught up on um, my big move. But that did not happen, so here I am after a very long week of moving my family and all our belongings to our new location in southern Utah, still working on my X70 review video. As I've been looking back over all the photos and the footage that I've gotten so far though, um, I, feel, I feel like I am now better able to answer the question, who, who is this for? Who's the X70 for? But let's first talk about who it's not for. First off, as I've already concluded previously, even though this has a pop-up screen, it's probably not for vloggers. While I do feel like the video quality is exceptional and the presets allow you to uh, save time and post and that the onboard mic is really good, um, it's just uh, you get better autofocus, image stabilization, and also more flexibility out of just a, a newer, nicer smartphone, which has the same field of view roughly anyway. This is probably not great for video only, or a video and photo hybrid shooter. On the positive side, it has really great color profiles and image quality, as I've already mentioned. It will shoot at 60 frames per second at 1080p, which is great for some 
light slow motion work. The battery can be charged in body while recording, so that's nice. And it's really, really lightweight, which probably would make it great for putting on a gimbal. Probably a gimbal that will support uh, any phone will probably support this I'm guessing and that that could be useful. The other thing that makes it non-viable for shooting video with any decent result is the fact that the video settings are severely limited. For instance when you're shooting video you've got to go into the menu to change the ISO. You can't change it on the body which I don't understand. Additionally, the low light performance, while it's actually pretty good um, for stills, when you go into video for some reason, ISO 1600 is like your bare lowest for good results. So, you know, it's probably just not viable for serious video work. It could be for street photographers. The best thing it has going for it is its size. It's inconspicuous, it's totally pocketable. And when it comes to lenses, I actually prefer the wider field of view than the 35 millimeter field of view personally. But without an electronic viewfinder, a lot of more traditional style street photographers will probably eschew it. Um, on the other hand, newer generation photographers like my wife, for instance, who are kind of raised on smartphones will probably prefer it. Add to that an electronic shutter, which will allow you to be completely silent, an articulating screen, which allows you to be more subtle than say the X100 series. Yes, I feel like this could be a decent street photography camera. So what about a family point and shoot camera? And here I have to say, kind of. It gets so many things right. If you're like me and you don't mind shooting JPEG at like family outings, the JPEGs out of camera with the presets, they're just gonna be stellar. But that autofocus just kills me. It has good face detection, but it's slow. It's just too clunky. And um, with my kids as rambunctious as they are when I'm out and about with them, I need more responsive autofocus. So I'd say if your family's a little older, if they're not moving around a lot, if you have uh, slower pets than we do, things like that, um, you're doing travel photography, doing a lot of posed stuff, then as a family point and shoot, it'll probably work great for you, um, as long as you like the wide field of view. And so now we get to the last category I want to explore, and that is, is the X70 a good camera for travel? And here again, I would say it depends. It has a decent close focus range for good detail shots. It has a wide field of view for, you know, scenery, it's not going to zoom and get you far away, you know, things like wildlife. So in that regard, it's not great for travel. And here's where we get to what this camera was made for, where it really shines. In my estimation, the thing the X70 does better than any other camera is it takes great selfies. So if you are one who likes to take selfies in front of beautiful landmarks or monuments, then yes, this is absolutely the camera for you. Buy it now and bask in the extraordinary selfiness that only this camera can provide.